Hi, I'm Jane Play, I'm creating free video content, teaching people how to trade Betfair absolutely for free. If you're enjoying my videos or you're learning from them, please support me back by hitting the subscribe button and also don't forget to hit the like button on any videos you watch. This will enable me to create more free content for you so you can learn to become a better trader. Best of luck in the markets. The runners are being called forward and they're off. They're racing for the bet £10, get £20 free. At Market in play. Chase, heading to the first of 12 fences and one of the first to begin is Danny P <coughs> The inside in the black with the red cap and deep of those lucky Robin in the black and white diamond jacket with the dark cheek pieces and the white noseband. Okay, so this is the first race at Sheffield on the day of the first ever Scotland Festival, and um, you can see the difference in the market. Doggly, doggly! Um, this act, the quality is actually pretty good pre-race um, for this time of year. Um, it's probably bumped up a little bit because um, there's a short price favourite um, who sees coming quite a lot at the moment because uh, he's front running. Um, but um, even though it's quite good, it's not a touch, it's not even 10% of what's in them. So if you was to sort of trade them and then come over to here and trade the same or the other meetings throughout the week, you're going to get absolutely stuffed. Because look, you can see there's hardly any money in these markets, so they'll run through you, where it's them, it won't. Um, they could still run through you because it's bigger bets, but you know what I mean, it's going to be a lot harder to um, to run through you at Cheltenham what it would on, on here. So if you're doing that, just be extremely careful. I'm going to have a little look and see if I, I see a safe opportunity just to keep through, but you know, I certainly won't be using large stakes like I would do at Cheltenham. I'm still on five pound, but I'll be clicking once or twice, so I've been clicking loads. I'll probably up that for Cheltenham as well, and then lower if I come back and look at this. I mean, if you can't treat the two separately, um, you know, the meetings outside of Cheltenham when you're trading Cheltenham, and you, I would just focus on Cheltenham and uh, not bother. But I'll have a little look anyway and see what happens by your length. So going past us with a circuit left to travel and about to swing left-handed to face up to the cross fence, which is going to be fence number six. You say nothing leads them out into the country by three parts of a length to Danny Park racing second. Lucky Robin just encouraged for a stride or two on that turn, still prominent out wide. Astrovir is next as they close in on the sixth fence. Obey the rules towards the inside of Astrovir, who just got a reminder there, Astrovir, and another one. As they swing the turn into the back stretch, little orange still at the back of the field. You know, a couple little trades like this, it helps spread up. You get a few ones at these or whatever through at the week. Or Next up is fence number seven. And you know, it certainly helps spread up. All adds up. And it helps towards your profits at the end, you know. Of the field. Little orange is still behind How I look at it, but it is a lot more dangerous. I mean, 138 only puts the trip through, so it's at 6.0. Was the first to rise but you can see, so no much to that favourite, this price is going to come crashing, and there's hardly any second. money there. Now reminders for Lucky Robin in third position. Obey the rules is trying to make some ground up behind those as they go to the open ditch, four out, fence nine. And Little Orange is challenging for fifth position with Astro. I'm out of here, man. Two are quite a way behind the others as they head up the hill towards fence number 10. This is three fences from home. You say nothing over in front. Got away by three parts of a length to Danny Park in second. A gap of seven or eight's opened up to Lucky Robin and then obey the rules to the inside. Little Orange is behind. Picked up a two quick there. And I must have got matched for thousands. Let's hope the, the let's hope the favourite falls because if he does, I'm out of here, man. Is next in the wouldn't that be nice? This fool will get pulled up. Left handed down back towards the final two fences, and it's you say nothing in front. And he's got a big lead as they <laughs> sucker. Now that's assuming uh, down to the that one won, of course. Danny Park. Over in front. So, anyway, that's three quid. That's three quid, and I'm going to go back to Cheltenham uh, where we should see bigger profits. But you know, three pound helps to move on. Market spend market in play. Desiree Girl is first to begin the grey horse, Emma Smith Chaston in, in the black and red. Leads up by a length to Vintage Fizz racing in second position. Excellence towards the inside jumps. Okay, so I think this is the third race of the day at Sexfield um, on day one of the Chunks Festival. They've held this race up for about four minutes because um, the second race at, uh, at the um, festival was uh, delayed due to a fallen horse. So obviously they're competing. Doggly, doggly.
they're competing for punters big time today and so they're evening the races out um, a little bit and this is running late as well uh, liquidity obviously is a lot lower i was uh, on 750 click on the last race at Cheltenham. Um, I've now switched that down to a fiver for this race. I've got to remember to keep switching my stakes because if I don't, I'm going to get myself in trouble or I'm going to go into Chelt either in trouble at Sedgefield or I'm going to um, I'm going to end up uh, using two small stakes at, um, at the festival. So, yeah, we've just got to keep an eye on that uh, and make sure I do it at the end of every race. It's an easy thing just to forget to do um, when you get in the swing of things because most days I don't need to change the stakes unless I'm... Uh, you know, I decide to for a particular reason. I, I would be doing it constantly. So anyway, we'll see if we can pull a few ticks off this one. Got to be a lot careful. Got to treat it differently to uh, uh, to the festival because otherwise, um, if I treat it the same, put the same bits, a few stakes through, I'm going to end up getting smashed. We don't want that to happen, obviously. So this is just to pull a few extra quid in uh, to help move along. Let's have a little look. Okay, now he's Dan Gunn, but he'd only be six or seven off the leader. They're very closely grouped as they head down the hill. Coming down towards flight to number four. On the right, Desiree Girl. On the left, Coral Blue. Not a huge amount to uh, choose between them as they landed. Right behind them is Lost and Found with Vintage Fizz. And then Balcotic. Lanny Gore's just a little bit worse than centre pack. Follow your fire towards the right, towards the back. So to Excellence and Dungun. Here's the flight, which will be the last on the circuit. It's time flight five this time. There's only four lengths separating. The nine runners are very closely grouped indeed as they head up towards us with a circuit left to travel. Desiree Girl to the far side and Cor Coral Blue towards the near side. A vintage Fizz right behind them with Lost and Found as they take the turn. They're about to run past their point of departure. A wave of four in behind. Balcotic out wide of Glanny Gores and Excellence and Fully or Fire to the inner. And Dan Gunn at the back of the nine runner field. Still only four lengths off the leader which is Desiree Girl. As they head down the flight again, this is flight number six. Desiree Girl over in front narrowly to Coral Blue, who took that in second. Vintage Fizz continues to go the shortest way on the inside. Making up a little bit of ground again out wide is Balcotic. So too Glanny Gores. Lost and found is with those. Then follow your fire to the inside. Dan Gunn's made a place and relegated Excellence now to be at the back of the nine-runner field. Here's the next down the far side. There you go. Well, that's a frustrating at the uh, festival. You'd have got matched a lot quicker. I got it took me uh, two times, or two bets if you like, or maybe possibly more. But three times to hit that price for me to get out. That's what liquidity does. I'm out of here, man. Lost and found behind them. Balcotic starts to slip back a little bit. Dan Gunn still well back. So too is Excellence, as Coral Blue joins Desiree Girl for a share of it. They're going down towards flight number eight, three out. Desiree Girl just the first to rise by a half length to Coral Blue. Glanny Gores is through into third place. Vintage Fizz to the inside. Now behind those, follow your fire, then Dan Gunn. Road along now, Balcotic and Excellence. And it's hard work for Lost and Found at the I mean, that's it. Few the times to uh, swinging left handed to come back down. I'm out of here, man. Lots of hurdles left to go. Desiree Girl trying to dig in to see them off from the front. Vintage Fizz working hard. So too Glanny Gores. Coral Blues come under pressure to the near side. Follow Your Fire still travels okay. The dark blue with the white hoop sleeves towards the right. Down towards the second line. <laughs> Sucker. Girl over in front of Vintage Fizz. Follow Your Fire still trying to pick up. And then Glanny Gores. Down the hill they come with one. Leave it left that. to go in the bigger stop bet handicap hurdle. So that's 675. I was tempted to go in again on uh, Desiree Girl, but I don't really like going too late on the one that's in front because if they hang on to it, I've been surprised a few times. So, and you can see again, it has managed to hold on to that um, front running position. Looked like it was going to get caught, but never did. So, there you go. Um, so, market always, suspended. Always best to not get involved in that red zone. You can see that the ground is it's a really beautiful day. It hasn't rained for a few days, as far as I'm aware, anywhere. So you can see the races are running quicker. Um, 5.20 is normally what the average time is of a, a two-mile full field on race. Um, and that has obviously been run quicker. And the ground has a massive impact on that. Um, obviously, a lot of the races are run when the weather's crap on these longer distances in winter. Um, but the ground is a lot softer. So, therefore, they can be run a lot slower than that. But, yeah, just got to be mindful of that as well. And certainly at Cheltenham, we'll see that more. So, um, I've got to knock in my head and all 10% off. 
I could adjust all the times if I wanted to um, by just adjusting the, the amount of times for a race, but I like to leave the defaults on. We might set up another version where you can just click a button um, so it adjusts them all for you or loads of different profile at a later date, but we'll see. Anyway, let's get back to the um, festival. Out of the contest, the jockeys quickly up. They take the turn into the back stretch to race opposite the grandstands and head down towards the first of a line of four. Fence number two upcoming, and it's Red Ochre who's gone on maroon and yellow. Right, back at Sedge. Oh, Galeen, oh, Galeen. This is a two-mile free-fair on Robbie Payne Cap Chase. Uh, liquidity is in front of what you expect this time. Uh, Payne is in the time of year. Um, excluded in uh, uh, the uh, Belton Festival, of course. Uh, have I just paused that video? Got to remember the sound. Got to remember that <laughs> on the racing TV um, channel, uh, compared to the the, the um, mute button is there, and on Sky Sports uh, channel where this is feed is coming from, or if you like their their stream, um, the port, that's the, actually the pause for the whole video. So I've got to be careful of that I do that all the time when I'm making these videos, usually off camera though. Um, yeah, you see these buttons around quite a lot more. So, um, they're more volatile, less money involved, have lowered mistakes. Might be able to actually get more money um, with the markets jumping around more. Um, however, it's not safe to put big stakes through, and obviously they're, they're more dangerous, so you've got to be careful and, and keep an eye on that. I cannot treat this the same as what I was treating uh, uh, Cheltenham as well. So, anyway, let's have a little look uh, and see if we can get some money through safely. Down towards fence number six, one night in town, and Becky Smith by about three parts of a length. Red Oak around. So there's hardly anything there, money wise, waiting. Side, so if that horse starts doing well, and if it's not coming in, that could have to be there. That fence. So I've got a chance, is now centre pack, followed by Just Call Me Al, and then a little gap to Getaway Jewel and Venmaster, who continues to race in the rear of the seven runner field. So making their journey down the hill towards the Johnny Ridley fence, this will be the last fence in a circuit's time. It's fence number seven on this circuit, and it's going to be one night in town. It's Arrives at it with a narrow lead to Red Ochre <coughs> on the near side and Blueberry, Blueberry Wine on the far side. All sailing over fence seven. Zen Master uh, has now just gone... Watching the time, there's a lot of right time to go on this, so this market is bouncing around up at the back of the quite fence. early on. Getaway Jewel's out of the contest. We're going to bypass the cross fence. I'm afraid the horse is still down there, so they're bypassing that fence. Uh, so the next time they'll leave the ground will be at fence number nine. I'm just waiting, game. I'm right, right outside track. the prices on these two, as you can see. Here. And up front, it's one night in town. With Blueberry Wine towards the inside, a little bit deeper out on the track, still well-placed Red Ochre, followed through by So I've Got a Chance. No move from Just Call Me Al, who's still nestled in in fifth position, travelling on a tight rein for Tom Midgley. And the overall back marker... It's going to make these take next to each other. The grandstands going down to the first on the far side, which is fence number nine. Sailing safely over Maybe I'm sitting a bit too much out of the prices here. Ten. I'm going to cancel them for the time one being. Night in town by a half I'm line. out of here, man. Line, right down the inside rail. Red Ochre a little bit deeper as they negotiate the tenth. Followed over by So I've Got a Chance. Just call me Al Racing a little bit deeper now and then Zen Master at the back. Racing down towards an open ditch, which they take on the rise. It's fence number 11, and it's four fences from home. At it now, so I've got a chance has come for a share of it. All change here. Just call me Al makes ground out wide. Trying to stay oh, up. one night in town. Red Oak has given way. Blue and is back. I'm out of here, man. Oh, that's great, great. Has gone through into fifth. As Red Oak going to reset the ladders. Back, racing towards the top of the hill. So I've got a chance. The dark green jacket for Thomas Riley towards the inside. The red and white of One Night in Town for Becky Smith. Right behind them, Blueberry Wine. And <laughs> Sucker. And we need that last five for match up, please. Uh, come on. the top of the hill, they come and down towards the second last fence then. Fence number 13. So there you go. And that's it. We're in the red zone. So I'm just going to leave it like that. The front, but there. Beginning to gather behind for a challenge, still traveling. So that is nine pounds eighty two, almost a tenner. I'm going to move back over to Cheltenham. So you can see, like, there's benefits for me trading with my style on both types of racing. Um, I can make more ticks quite often uh, on uh, races like this where liquidity is not too bad. You know, I like to see over 300k um, and a nice amount of money being in hands in play. Oops. Uh, where at Cheltenham, um, there's a lot more money being um, changed over. However, 
um, the markets are more buttered up, so you can't get so many ticks for quite a lot of time. But if you get the right market the right suspended, time, you can make some big profits. So um, there you go. Risk fee reward is what it all comes down to. Anyway, I'm back to uh, Cheltenham. Right, we're at Sedgefield for the um, for the three fifty, but it's almost ten to four. This week. it's gone off nearly twenty minutes late. Um, I've got a uh, Hilton Festival on TV as well. I'm just keeping on that because that's due to go off in literally one minute's time. So I'm not going to this one short. I cannot imagine they're going to hold Cheltenham up um, for this race. No idea why it's so late. It's ridiculous. There's only two meetings today and they can't get them to run off. So if Cheltenham starts on TV, I'm just going to switch off this one and, and flick across to there. Um, so we'll have a little look to see whether we can get some trades through in the meantime. So we don't miss out on this race. Coulthard setting a reasonable pace in front by three parts of a length to Gaius They are lining up over at um, Cheltenham. No, Cheltenham has started. So I'm straight over to there. No, it is a three mile race. Jumping out second last, Elat. Yeah, let's get to Cheltenham and have a look. About eight off the leaders for Conroe Farrell as they head down the hill towards the flight. Market the in play. Time. It's going to be flight three on this circuit. Okay, so um, Sedgefield have managed to get sort of back on time or a letter a couple of minutes behind, but that's quite a, quite impressive actually because they were um, they were twenty minutes behind on the last race and over like the chance to miss it. So um, this race here is a three mile free fell on handicap. It's a long race. Unfortunately, we've got no favourite, which is going to make it harder for me to trade. And you can see he's out in front. So the price is crashing in, pushing everything else out. So this isn't an RDL situation for me to trade whatsoever. This is a runner I would have been looking at, but you can see that he's gone out massively in price at the moment. So we still come back and win the race. This is a, a long way to go. Jesse Lightfoot, wherever it is, uh, over there on the rail there. Um, so we'll have a little look. I'm not interested in trading the favourite. This might be a spectator sport for me, but if I can see an opportunity, We'll put some money in there um, at the moment. I've still got that on 750 a tick from Cheltenham. Change that back. It's okay, that's free trade. So, um, yeah, I'll have a little look and see if I can make some money out of this. But the chances of it, I don't know whether it happens or not. We don't know. The shortest way for Charlie Hammond towards that inside rail. A couple of lengths back to Furax, who's next in the field. Just so just a waiting game, feet. really. Just waiting to see if the price gets down to me. A little bit of ground deep on the track. Almost joins Jesse Lightfoot towards the back as they negotiate fence six. All over that. You've got to be careful with the timing. Anything happens to play, but we're going to be in a lot of trouble here because this price is going to come crashing in. Wait for these two with them. And powerful position shows the way by just over a length. Wiggles within second as they negotiate the first down the far side. Uh, Wigglesworth would probably come crashing in, yeah, it's in second, so we'll, we'll see. But we don't want to be in at the end because if the favourite doesn't win it, obviously it's probably going to be one of these things that turns over. Just notice that game line is coming down in price as well. But look, there's hardly any money, so that market could move too quick through me. Extremely careful here. It's a long way to go though, so... And pops Happy over to go in there. Length to Wigglesworth and Game Line, who are now sharing second position. Because it's such a long way to go, I'm happy to, to go towards the next fence, fence number to go in for a bigger so stake. But obviously, even though there's, there's little money there, just because it's, it's, it's so far for the race to run, it's still like you know wide. two miles left or something in this race. It's not even halfway into three three. So to rain fee, and then a I'm going to cancel it off because it's too far out of contention now. So Bridge set the ladders, and you can see Game Nine has come into second favour. On the descent back towards the home straight, two fences in the home straight await them before they the final circuit. Next up is going to be fence number 11, which is the. You see, well, the favourite is running so well up front. Powerful position, and Jack Tudor have made just about every. The price is just so well short. At the well short. It's holding so much of the market. Yeah, even money, a horse holds 50% of the market. So at that price, that's holding 70% or something. 70% of the book, so something like that. Eight off the leaders. As they continue their journey down towards fence number 12, this will be the final fence in the circuit's time. 
powerful position towards the far right, side. Just quick three quid there. The side, almost came for a share of it. We'll just picks up bottom of the market. Well between horses, Furax behind them. Just Same we didn't go for more tickets. Really. Smith as they go past us, Rainfee to the inside, and Jesse Lightfoot at the back. So swinging left-handed away they go. So the price you see on the favourite has gone out a bit. The cross fence. It's so fence number thirteen of the nineteen. Prices on the others have come in. Powerful position being joined. I'm out of here, man. This favourite is literally controlling the whole market. It's what you've got to consider when you've got these uh, sort of price favourites. The game nine has gone out massively. They go once again. Powerful position in front by a half now to to ten steps. You can see why he's lost a bit of ground. Temper a little bit. These two up front as they take that fence. Flying over by four a long way to go. Behind them, game line and Ray Fee jumped together. A gap's developed to Furax of about eight lengths and three or four more to Jesse Lightfoot as they press on to another plain fence down the far side. Lovely leap by powerful position. Wigglesworth also took it well. They've all streamed over that fine, but they're getting a little bit spaced out as they go down towards the next. Fence number 16 is the open ditch, and it's four fences. I'm out of here, man. Powerful position to the inside. Oh, Wigglesworth might have just been the first to rise and land there. They got away by three to four lengths to Rain Fee, who's trying to run on behind them. Come on, match us up. We're not far off getting matched. The track is uh, game line. They go over the next. That's the third last fence, fence number 17, and racing towards the top of the hill. <laughs> Sucker. A little bit deeper out, wiggles with rain. I'm not liking this. Trying to join in. I must in admit. Position as they race towards the top of the hill, they're about to begin the descent down towards the final two fences. And swinging left-handed, powerful position has gone on by a half length. Wiggles within second. He's having a look round here. Jack Tudor on the leader. Powerful position down towards the second last then. And we're out, thank God. I could say there was plenty of time left. If you're wondering, there's so much time left in the race. Now would have been the time I would have had to get out if it was still looking the same. Now we're in that red zone. So, um, held on to me cool there. Opens up by a and uh, managed to get out of it. Could have looked at a thirty-five pound loss there. That's quite scary, but I'd say I would have taken it. I wasn't going to reach six hundred. But very much the total liability was six hundred. Thirty-five out of that is a huge amount. It, it could be tempting to go in here for like ten, twenty picks, but it all comes down to what happens to the favourite, and it's just not worth it. If you fall, you're going to get murdered, and you're going to get destroyed. So you're not afraid. The horse in second at the end. Market suspended. Right, so we'll move back over to Elspeth. The runners are being called in. Market suspended. Market in play. With Vickers Dot Vet Open National Hunt Flat Race. They've got two miles and a furlong to cover. And up front, Duke of Deception is first to begin in the pink jacket with a black star, black sleeves with pink stars on this. Okay, we have the 10 past 5 at Sexfield, um, which is on day one of this gentleman festival also going on. Um, this is a national hunt flat race, or if you like a bumper. Um, market liquidity is actually pretty good. Oakley, Oakley. Race. I imagine it's been boosted a little bit from people betting on um, Cheltenham and also having a little look at this as well. But um, even still, can't treat it um, like you do um, Cheltenham Festival. Um, got to switch strategies almost. I say strategies, it's more a case of switching sort of stakes really. So I switched down to £5. I've been using 7 50 a click over at Cheltenham, just using £5 a click here. I'm also doing more clicks at Cheltenham as well, so trying to get through what I can. Although in the last race over there, I just noticed afterwards I used fivers, so I had a smaller profit. Anyway, so we've got to be careful on this one. Um, there's three horses I'm interested in, really, uh, which is the second, third, and fourth favourite, possibly of uh, this one as well, um, if the price dips in a little bit. So we'll have a little look uh, and see if we can pull off a few ticks. Uh, in a safe manner, of course. We win between horses and Royal Sam and Adam Wedge to the near side. So this looks like it's turning into a two horse race at the moment. Blue and red for Jack Tudor. And as far as the market is concerned. Max Kendrick and Carwheel Fungi near side for Ryan Mania. It's not exactly where I want to. The tablet and Joe Williamson. Four lengths separate the seven runners then. All to play for here as they race past us and swing a left-handed turn to race into the country. So, towards there's the some big money flying around down here. So I'm just going to try and get in front of it. 
might just have gone back to lead here to Glory Bridge to the Let's see if we get a dip down basically in price to pick us up and matches both sides of the book. Um, and if it does go through us, we've got 200 there, 126 there. 650 there if that money stays in the market parts of it and it goes wrong we can get out against it so opposite the grandstands they go turning left-handed to race the side of the track no marked increase in the tempo but they went a good pace from the get-go and on the near side glory bridge has it by about a head the price is quite a bit higher than that at the moment but there's hardly any money a few little chunks of 50 28 there 40s, but there's not a lot of big chunks in between, so that could easily just flip down. Hundreds come in there, which will hold the market up, obviously. Pace just quickening a little bit here, but only just over halfway through the race. To separate all seven runners as they continue down the far side. Almost four in line now on the inside. More chunks of money on this runner than there is on the Glory Bridge. Four deep car wheel fungi. I'm out of here, man. Right on the premises, have a quick look at how fun it is. that thing. So to to so there's not a lot of money there, unfortunately. I would go in at sixes, but. Of the hill for the final time. Glory Bridge holding that inside rail, Brian Hughes. But you can see how quickly that market can move. If we get it wrong, it'll go through us. A tap down the shoulder for the Scorpion King. TikTok just shadowing the leaders on the inside rail. Carwheel Fungi just gets a bit of a squeeze. Gonna the I'm out of here, man. Okay. Swing we'll sand back to get. The final Might as well drop that tick because it's empty there. For home. Glory Bridge still right there with Duke of Deception Royal Sand. Hold a few more ticks now in a bit later on if we do get much. <laughs> Sucker. Doesn't look like we will. So unfortunately, no trade on this race. And um, it's the way it goes sometimes. You've got to know when to sit on your hands. Too dangerous to go in now. Didn't get an opportunity. Didn't trade. The final furlong, Glory Bridge booting now, um, this might make for a boring video, but it's a lesson that everyone needs to learn. You really do need to know when to sit on your hands and do nothing. And that was a prime example. Market suspended. Most people overtrade, and uh, overtrading is a bad thing because if you're just chucking, um, trying to get money through the market willy nilly without any kind of thought or game plan, um, then you will you will lose, even if you're trying the same strategy as me, but, you know, you're not planning when you're putting the, the, the money through the market, when it's safe to, what is good value. Um, so I was going to, uh, if you remember earlier on, above that money, where it's safe, um, I thought that was good value and safe. Didn't quite come down to me, didn't quite get much, but, you know, it's the way it goes sometimes. Right, I'm going to switch back over to uh, Cheltenham now. Um, that will be on a separate video, so if you're interested in seeing how Cheltenham goes in comparison, please watch that video as well.